Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have another collaboration beer and this is yet another half Swedish, half English brew. So for the Swedish side of things we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebori as you would say in Swedish, the craft beer capital of Sweden and we're having a taste of another beer from Stigbergets Brewery and this is one that they've done in collaboration with Wylam Brewery who come from Newcastle in the very northeast of England. So both of these breweries have a very good reputation when it comes comes to you know hazy IPAs, New England IPAs, but this particular beer is called the Imperial Chocolate Orange Stout and it's an Imperial Stout coming in at 12% ABV. So it should be a little bit of a monster. Neither of these breweries do Imperial Stouts all that often, but the ones that I've had from um, Stieg Berriots have been pretty good. I've had Scotch Ales and things from Stieg Berriots in the past as well, but I can't think um, if I've even had a porter or anything like that. I don't think I've had a dark beer from Wylam now that I think about it, but both breweries that carry a very good reputation these days so hopefully this is another good beer and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it as well. Incidentally this one was released on the 6th of September 2019 through the small parties in Seistenbolaget here in Sweden so if you're watching from Sweden that is where you'll get it so yeah so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website it's the link to my other reviews that I've done both from Steve Berrett and from Wylam. No doubt I'll add more to both of those lists in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for both the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the English beers. This beer will appear in both of those because it is half and half, and those lists are added to regularly. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is massively appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stiegberg's Brewery first off then, since these guys are the home brewery, on to my brewery notes then. So Stiegberg's Brewery are based in Gothenburg, Utebor as you would say in Swedish, and they were founded by Nils Huldkrantz and Richard Simonsson. And these two guys own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is Bar Shino and the Hag Beyond's Cafe, which are located on Lena Gata in the city and both of these opened back in 2007. So originally the idea was to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars and this led to them actually kegging the beers and then selling them on to pubs and eventually to bottling their beers which began in November of 2014. But the original beers that they were brewing were mainly English and German styles but more recently of course they began expanding into the more hoppy American beer styles and this is where they really began to make their name. So the original head brewer was Ole Anderson, who's one of the co-owners of OO Brewing, and uh, he was the creator of the Narangi, which is an OO Brewing, quite a famous IPA within Sweden, and of course he was the one who made the GBG Beer Week, the Amazing Haze and the Muddle, you know, three of the really well-known um, Stieg Berriot's IPAs. Um, but he was replaced for a period of time by Barnaby Struve, who was vice president at Three Floyds over in Munster in Indiana and America, another top-class brewery. Um, and recently as well, I think it was back in mid-2018, they moved to a new brewery in Party Halarna, which is where they brew 5,000 litres at a time and they're also beginning to work on some sour beers as well. They've released a good few of those and the project is still being built up to size as far as I can gather. They also started selling their beers in these 440 milliliter cans which means they're able to export them a lot more easily than they were when they were in the little 330 milliliter bottles. But they now have a brew team of Ollie Banks who used to work for Beaver Town in London and also Lucas Munride who used to work for, um, for All In Brewing who are one of the gypsy brewers around the Gothenburg area. There's so many breweries in Gothenburg these days it really is the kind of craft beer capital of Sweden if you like and it's somewhere that I need to visit quite soon actually and go and have a look at the brewer's bar and all of these kind of things. But yeah, Stieg Berets, as I say, a brewery that carry a very good reputation when it comes to New England IPAs and um, one of the breweries that really helps put Swedish craft beer on the map in fact so if you're interested in Swedish beers Stieg Berets is a pretty good place to start. As I say, check out the Amazing Haze and also the uh, new and improved version of the GBG beer week actually that's definitely worth checking out as well but um yeah so that's all you need to know about Steve Barrett's as always check out the brewery website you can check out the uh, the Facebook and Instagram as well that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and of course if you're interested in the different beers that they do I'd recommend you look at their untapped and root beer pages so anyway on to the English side of this beer then so to Wylam Brewery so Wylam Brewery was founded by John Boyle and Robin Layton in the small village of Wylam which you can find to the north of Newcastle upon Tyne back in the 
the year 2000. But both of these men had taken early retirement. John had been a computer engineer and he met Rob who was a former sea captain but also an avid home brewer and John fixed Rob's PC which took a very long time and apparently Robin and John agreed that the payment for fixing the computer would be five gallons of the vice beer that they'd been drinking together. But um, Robin had been really interested in barley wines, stouts and sour beers which really weren't very popular in the northeast of England at the time and John uh, and him wanted basically to see these introduced back into the local pubs. So they produced their first beer which was the landlord's choice in August of 2000 and this beer got very popular in the local area simply through word of mouth. But they moved premises to Hedden on Wall in 2006 and then ten years later in 2016 they moved once again to a new site at the Palace of Arts in Exhibition Park which has a 30 barrel brew house and a brewery tap room with and they do serve a little bit of food there as well but in recent times they've been doing a lot of New England IPAs and sour beers and this has really helped them kind of increase their reputation these guys are widely regarded as one of the best kind of New England uh, IPA producers in England they're, I think they're kind of widely regarded as one of the best craft breweries in England along with the likes of Daya, Cloudwater and uh, there's probably a few others there, Verdant and things like that that are um, that are you know commonly mentioned when it comes to English beer but for a long time you know it took these guys actually quite a while to build their reputation in comparison to um, the other breweries like Cloudwater and things like that while they were around for a good few years before they started really getting into the um, the hazy kind of game I think I reviewed the two the first two canned beers that they released actually um, I think it was Market um, Market Hall Wines in Durham that I got those from so those are definitely worth checking out um, you know Wylam Brewery a very very good New England style IPA brewery lots of nice sours and things like that and they are starting to get a bit more adventurous from what I see with the different stouts and things that they're doing so hopefully we start to see a little bit more variety from Wylam in terms of their uh, their styles and things like that but they do seem to very much have their kind of old range if you like like the Jake Head and stuff which is a really really good West Coast um, IPA I would recommend that you check out that one and they seem to put all their of newer beers in the can so it seems like they do keep the older stuff but they also have the kind of new more adventurous stuff as well but a brewery that you definitely want to check out but that's all you really need to know about them and about Stieg Berwick so if you want to learn more about the brewery again check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and of course Untapped and Rate Beer are very good for seeing all the different beers that these breweries have both produced while them of course are really quite prolific these days so um, yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then we can get rid of the brewery notes so as you can see this beer the artwork on this one is quite similar to the other collaboration brews that Stieg Berwick's have done with the English breweries in recent times you know the Brexit IPA that they did the um, the one with Verdant as well the double that was simply called double IPA and um, that was a really nice beer too but this one is pretty much exactly the same the Stieg Berwick's name at the top and this one I think the artwork of this is actually quite similar if I remember correctly to um, the Narangi that they've done before, um, or the, the OO Brewing Narangi, it's kind of similar to that, it really does remind me, except the dot is a lot smaller. But um, yeah, nicely presented this one, it says store cold, drink fresh, 12% um, Imperial Stout, this one Imperial Chocolate Orange Stout. Um, but yeah, that's 440 milliliter can this one, so let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste. And I've got a feeling that this beer is going to go down really quite nicely. And I'll tell you something, you can smell a bit of orange out of this one as soon as you open it up. But let's get it out and into the glass. Like I said earlier, neither of these breweries are really well known for Imperial Stouts, but they're very, you know, they carry a very good reputation anyway, so I'm sure this one will be a pretty interesting beer. Um, so yeah, as you can see, dog's going a little bit crazy, we need to see what he's up to in a minute. But yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured... Um, a nice sort of dark ebony rosewood colour. If I hold it up to the light, um, you know, there's not a lot of light coming through this one at all. There's a solid um, half finger of a frothy, I would say quite dark tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. Quite a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. And, you know, overall, um, it is really kind of pretty much what you would expect from an Imperial Stout, to be honest. There's nothing overly surprising about it. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this one, um, you know, it's a bit dark to see through, but trust me, if you put the light through this, you're going to see there's not a lot coming through that at all. But um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Nothing overly surprising about the, um, about the appearance of this beer. Mm -hmm. So straight away, you're going to notice with this one, the orange actually comes across 
as being really quite sharp. And it's interesting this because there's a good contrast in this beer. You've really got um, a kind of quite roasty smelling malt base to it. And I'm curious now as to whether this is going to be more of a sweet stout or if it's going to be a really roasty stout with a little bit of tartness to it. Um, because in the aroma, as I say, it's got a lot of roasty toasty notes to it. It's not quite, um, you know, it's really, it's not quite like, um, it's not really coffee-ish or anything like that. You can definitely pick out the roasty black malts. I would suspect there's maybe a bit of carafa in here because it does have that kind of smoothness that smells almost like coffee, but it's not quite as sweet as coffee is. So I do suspect there's a bit of carafa in here, which of course is a Weirmann malt from Germany. Um, but yeah, the aroma in here is really, really nice. Bit of sharp orange on the front. You can also smell a little bit of a kind of red fruity quality to this one, you know, like figs, raisins, plummy sort of thing. There's a little bit of that coming out here, but the tart oranges really do push their way out of the um, out of the aroma here, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, some brown sugars in there as well. You can really smell a little bit of that kind of treacly molasses sort of thing. Um, it's got a, it's a little bit toasty, kind of sweet. Um, good balance between toasty and sweet brown sugars as well, actually. Um, but nice earthiness as a sweet as well, you'll always get a little bit of that, maybe they've used Challenger or something in this. Um, but yeah, it's kind of got everything you'd expect, a nice sort of roasty black malt backbone. There is a little bit of a kind of bready quality to this one, which is, again is making me think there's maybe a bit of carafe in here. It does have a little bit of a kind of dusty um, bready kind of quality to it. Like It's almost like a really well-fired bread crust to be honest. There is a bit of chocolate in there and um, I would say that it's actually quite finely balanced between being um, you know, like an 80-90% cocoa, but I would say there's a little bit of a maybe 40-50% more milky chocolate cocoa aroma coming out of this one, which is nice. Um, no real vanilla or woody qualities or anything like that, which I, th I thought you might get a little bit of vanilla out of this one, but not really. Um, on the hoppy side of things, like I say, a little bit of earthiness. Um, there is a touch of grassiness in there too. Some nice red fruity notes, raisins, plums, kind of sharp, um, but they really come behind that big sharp... Uh, it's going to, you know, that big sharp kind of tart orangey kind of quality that this beer has. To be honest, if I'm comparing this to the Terry's Chocolate Oranges, this one to me, it really um, smells a little bit more like the dark Terry's Chocolate Orange. I think, is that the, um, is that the very dark blue, no, the very, I forget what colour the dark chocolate one is. I think it is, ve I think it's like the, the very dark blue, because you get the red one, which is plain. You get the, the sort of royal blue one, which is the milk one. You get the white chocolate one, which has a, a, a lighter blue packaging, if I remember correctly. And that only tends to come out at Christmas. And you also get the dark chocolate one too. And this one to me really smells a bit more like the kind of dark chocolate, um, Terry's chocolate orange. So yeah, I think this one will be really interesting. So without further ado then, let's have a taste of this beer and just see how we get on. This one is the Imperial Chocolate Orange Stout from Stieg Berts Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden and Wylam Brewery who are from Newcastle over in England. So let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull. Yeah. That's really quite nice, actually. It gets a thumbs up from me, this one. Um, it's not. It's actually very well balanced. I thought this was either going to be a very sweet stout or it was going to be, you know, a very roasty one, but with a sort of sharp tart element there. But it's actually one that's very, very well balanced. Normally, when you get stouts, you need to think, right, is it an imperial stout? Uh, is it a sweet stout? Is it a Russian imperial? What exactly is it? Um, to be honest, in terms of the sort of Substyles, if you like, it's actually quite hard to uh, to place this one because it's got a little bit of everything. But that's good; it keeps it interesting. And of course, it's not all about styles; it's more about the main question always with a craft beer is: is it a good beer? And the question for this one is yes. Um, and I'm not surprised, as I say, both breweries carry a good reputation. They don't dry stouts too often, but I'm not surprised that they pulled off something pretty damn nice. Yeah. So, how do we break down the flavour of this one then? This is a, a really solid Imperial Stout. So, straight away you can feel that nice roasty toasty black malt just going right across the middle of the palate. It's, um, it definitely has a nice little bit of a, um, a sort of toasty bread crusty quality to it in my opinion. Um, you can really feel that blanket in the middle of your tongue too. Um, there's also a nice little bit of a kind of chocolatey 
um, quality to this beer as well. It actually comes across as being more milky in the flavour than it did in the uh, in the aroma. So I would say that it's maybe a sort of forty, well maybe maybe about a fifty kind of sixty percent cocoa chocolate flavour that's coming out here, and that kind of sits in the middle of your palate. And the interesting thing is that you can really get the oranges are coming out in the middle of the palate, and usually of course when you've got hops and things added into the beer. Um, it's, it's usually they come out at the front of the palate, so I do suspect that part of the malt base in here will actually be authentic chocolate oranges, because normally you wouldn't get um, the orange flavour coming out of this, and of course if they've added that chocolate into the boil, the thing is it'll probably have melted and the actual orange kind of flavour essence or whatever it is that they use in, in Terry's chocolate orange, that'll have separated, and that's maybe why it comes across as being a little bit sort of um, sharper in its orangey flavours. It's an interesting thing to think about that, a little bit of chemistry. My degree, my master's degree is useful for something, glad for that. helps me be a little bit more of a thoughtful alcoholic, you know? But, um, yeah, so the way that that all goes together is really nice. The chocolatey flavours kind of sit in the middle of the palate. Um, the brown sugary notes that I was talking about, I mean, there is a little bit of a, a kind of caramelly quality in the middle of the palate, but really in the very centre of your tongue, for me, that's where the orangey flavours are starting to kind of congregate, to kind of join together. But as you come further forward as well, the sharpness of the orangey flavours increases a little bit. And that's a really kind of interesting dynamic you've got on in this beer. If you go to the front corners of your palate and then in from the side a little bit, you do get a little touch of a kind of almost woody undertone to this one. I want to say again, if you go to the very centre of your tongue and move forward a bit, there is a little bit of a kind of nutty quality. But these little nutty and woody undertones that you get are actually quite common for big imperial stouts like this, so it's not surprising that you find them there. The really quirky thing about this one, if you took away the orange flavours, this one would be quite a, just, you know, it would be quite a good, but, you know, quite a normal um, imperial stout, quite a sweet imperial stout, to be honest. But that kind of slight tartness that you have from the oranges really makes it very, very kind of quirky, to be honest with you, and I like that about it. So yeah, the orangey flavours, you've got a little bit of sharpness in the very centre of your palate, and um, that kind of spreads a little bit further forward on the, the tongue as well. One thing I would say is, I'd be curious to know if they added... Um, you know, mosaic or uh, or amarillo or what kind of hops exactly they used in this beer because you can, of course, get oranges from quite a few hops these days. Sabro is a new one that's given you a lot of oranges. Um, I think, does Idaho 7 give you them too? I think, yeah, Sabro and Idaho 7, I'm sure, both give you um, some really nice kind of orangey flavours. They can be quite interesting. And, of course, you've got the classic amarillo, you've got mosaic, azaka, um, mandarina bavaria, and uh, Pacifica from New Zealand, of course, will give you some orangey qualities as well. So I wonder exactly what hops they've used in uh, in this beer. That would be interesting to know, actually. Because those flavours would actually complement it very, very well. And we'll talk about the fruity side of the hops in a little minute, actually, because there are some interesting things going on there. But on the green side of the hops, if you can call it that in this beer, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice kind of quite um, roasty earthiness actually. It's quite a, a, it's almost like a well-fired earthiness that comes out of this beer to be honest with you, which is interesting. But that get, builds a good bridge between the roasty elements that are coming out of the base of this beer. So there's a good bridge there. But as you come further forward along the side of the tongue, of course, that just kind of smoothens out a little bit. You get a little bit of a a kind of floral quality on the front corners of your palate, then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more um, grassy. Um, and then, of course, behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you've got that nice little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters come out of the beer. And this is what I was saying earlier. Usually, the, hot, the fruits that come out of the hops, you'll get those behind the front part of your palate. But then anything else, if you add fruit to the beer, it takes, it sort of um, extinguishes a little bit some of those... Um, kind of grassy bitter esters on the side of the tongue but the the, the fact that you've got that kind of tartness um, sharpness I don't know what the right word to use for that is but the fact that you've got those orangey flavours in the middle of your palate um, kind of tells me that yeah they've added the Terry's chocolate orange to the brew and in the boil I would think but yeah on the hoppy side of things then with the fruits that you get there um, it's interesting because there is definitely an element of an orangey quality in there. Exactly which hop it is that they've put in here, I couldn't tell you. Um, I would think if they'd used Amarillo for it, it would be a little bit more oily 
than it is. It actually comes across as being quite juicy and almost a little bit like a kind of tropical orange and that makes me think it might be something more along the lines of like um, Mosaic or um, Azaka or something like that. Um, it could even be Mandarina Bavaria, I don't know. Um, that's not such a high alpha acid hob though, that's only around 8% alpha acid whereas the others are like you know 11, 12, 13, 14 and things like that. So that's something to consider there. But um, the fruity esters that come across in this one are quite interesting. There is definitely a sort of juicy and almost sharp orange coming out of this one. But you do get little elements of a kind of, um, I would say, you know, there is a little bit of a red fruity quality to this one as well. So yeah, it's got a little bit of a kind of juicy, almost figgy quality to it. It's not really... It's, it's definitely got a little bit of a berry-ish note and it's actually quite hard to pinpoint exactly what berry it is because I think the orange flavours both in the middle of the palate and in the actual uh, hoppy fruity part of the beer, um, those kind of really just take over the fruity side of the beer to be honest but the further you go into the aftertaste it does get a little bit kind of it's almost like a kind of red currant or um, something like that it's not quite sharp and plummy as I was picking up in the aroma it is more kind of juicy and figgy and kind of red currant to be honest so keep that in mind when you um, keep that in mind when you have a taste of this beer that's the fruity side of this one is really quite interesting quite sharp and tart with the oranges in one regard more juicy and slightly tropical in the other and you do get just a little touch of a red fruity quality kind of pushing its way out of this beer later on but i mean in terms of flavor this is a really really nice beer I think um, it's well balanced, it doesn't really fit into the sweet stout category, it doesn't really fit into the more kind of Russian imperial roasty toasty side of things, it's very very well balanced and it has that little bit of sharpness to it which makes it very quirky, so just keep that in mind when you uh, when you try this one. So in terms of the, um, the mouthfeel of this one then, I would say that this beer is quite full bodied, um, carbonation is very very smooth, the mouthfeel overall... Um, Yeah, it's quite an oily one, this, actually. It's quite an oily mouthfeel that comes out of this beer. Um, but the malt base, as I say, good balance between some kind of more roasty and toasty qualities. I think the carafa malt, I'm, I'm sure it's carafa malt that's in this one, that's kind of forming the base of the beer, but it smooths out really quite nicely. This You do get a bit more sweetness out of it the further you go into the aftertaste. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, IBUs would be a bit difficult to place with this beer. I think we're talking maybe 50 or 60 IBUs with this beer. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of its roastiness, and it's quite sweet to be honest with you. I think maybe 50 or 60 IBUs with this one. Um, and of course the fruity side is really nice. It does have a little bit of a sharpness to it. And I don't know if tart is the right word to describe it, but it definitely has a little bit of a sharp, pardon me, orangey quality to it. But the further you go into the um, the aftertaste with this one, you get a nice sort of juicy, fruity ester coming out of it as well. But overall, it's a really, really nice beer, this one. And um, I'm glad that I was able to review it for you here. It's cool to review an Imperial Stout from both of these breweries because you won't come across them all that often. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this. This one is the Imperial Chocolate Orange Stout at 12% ABV from Stieg Barrett's Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden and the Wylam Brewery in um, Newcastle in England. So yeah, check it out if you get the chance. Released on the 6th of September 2019 through Seastan Balaga here in Sweden. I hope you've enjoyed my take on this one. It's been great to review this for you. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Stieg Barrett's and from Wylam. And I will catch you guys very soon with another beer review. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys very soon. The Imperial Chocolate Orange Stout at 12% ABV from Stieg Barrett's Brewery in Utabori and Wylam Brewery from Newcastle in England. Until the next time, Slander just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanju, Skull, cheers.